Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, God of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, hail Thee as the sun above. Melt Thy clouds of sin and sadness, drive the pain of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the joy of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and planets sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, blossoming man of flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music lifts us sunward in the triumph song of life. I want to ask someone with their iPad to please erase the line on the screen. Thank you as we continue worship. Welcome. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Annapolis, where we strive to build bold and compassionate lives. We welcome you, whoever you are, however you believe, however you are able to join us in a living tradition of wisdom and spirituality. We are a covenantal faith built on seven principles from the inherent worth and dignity of every human being to a respect for the interdependent web of all existence. And most especially, we honor our eighth principle by which we affirm and covenant to dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions whenever wherever we encounter them. On behalf of our ministers, Reverend John Cresswell and Reverend Anastasia Zinke, we welcome you as we journey together towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community. Thornell, will you light our chalice? I will. Rise up. O flame, by thy light glowing, show us beauty, vision, and joy. are gonna clear up, put on a happy face, brush off the clouds and cheer up, put on a happy face, take off the gloomy mask of tragedy, it's not your style, you look so good that you'll be glad you decided to smile, pick out a pleasant animal, stick out that noble chin, Wipe off that full of doubt, slap on a happy grin, and spread the sunshine all over the place. Just put on a happy face. Oh, <laughs> 
Good morning, UUCA. Good morning. So, yeah, good morning. good morning. We have the Wonder Box today. I'm going to give you a hint of what's inside. It's a feeling, a feeling. So let's open the Wonder Box. Turn around and show it. And what is it? Joy. You say goodbye. Thank you, Hadley, Rhea, and Rosemary for bringing us the Wonder Box from your home this morning and finding the emotion joy for us. I'm Julie, and I'm going to share a short story with you now that will introduce what our grown-ups will be talking about for the rest of the service. This is a Buddhist story titled, Where is My Key? So there was a man who had lost his key to his house and it was night and he was searching under the lamppost on his hands and knees, looking for his key, looking for his key. And his friends walked by and his friends said, what are you looking for? And he said, well, I lost my key. And they got down on their hands and knees and began helping him search for his key in the light under this lamppost. And with no success of finding the key, they finally asked the man, one of his friends said, where exactly did you lose it? And he said, well, I lost it in my house. <laughs> and his friend said, well, why are we looking out here? And the man replied that he was looking there because it'd be the easiest to spot under the lamppost where there's the most, most light. We're not very different from this man. We are doing the same thing all the time, always looking for joy and happiness in places because they seem the obvious place to look believing it to be where it's easy to see or maybe where we have found it in the past. I wonder this morning, where else might we find joy? Thanks, Julie. I'm gonna share a reflection with you. Just give me a moment. Let's take a moment of silence. As we prepare for some words, I'm going to share from President of the Unitarian Universalist Association, Dr. S uh, Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, who sent us a pastoral letter this week. I think the words are quite appropriate this morning. So let's pause again for a moment of silence. He says, I want you to know your work matters. There's so much collective grief that needs expression. There's so much organizing and resistance that needs support. There is so much compassion that needs to be nurtured. Religious community is one of the components to express our collective grief and to be strengthened by the knowledge that we are not alone. This experience of interdependence creates compassion and calls us to act for that place of love for the things we hold most deeply. We hold in our prayers Jacob Blake, who was paralyzed after being shot in the back by Kenosha police. We pray for his family, especially his children, who witnessed this violence. We pray for the loved ones of those killed and injured in Kenosha after a white nationalist shot into a crowd of protesters. We pray for 
movement leaders and those witnessing for Black Lives Matter. We pray for people in California, Iowa, Louisiana, and Arkansas trying to survive in the midst of unprecedented fires and storms. We pray for our children and their parents, caregivers, and teachers who are navigating unbelievable challenges, while at the same time they're trying to teach little ones and youth how to love and thrive. I also want to recognize those of you whose work is directly connected to supporting and responding, responding to communities, leaders, and individuals that are in the midst of crisis situations. From organizing to communications to pastoral care and disaster response, your work to de uh, is deeply important. In this time when nearly every day brings new trauma, you keep showing up. May you too take care of your spirit and know that it is needed for this work as well. And to everyone, I send my deep care to you and your loved ones and families. Thank you for the ways you bring so much care and commitment to your congregations, communities, and to this faith we share, Unitarian Universalism. I love you. I am with you. I am praying with you and for you, always. That's from Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, president of the UUA. We thank her for her pastoral words this morning. finally knew what you had to do and began, though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles, mend my life. Each voice cried, but you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do, though the wind pried with its stiff 
fingers at the very foundations, though, though their melancholy was terrible. It was already late enough, and a wild night and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds. And there was a new voice which you slowly recognized as your own that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world. Determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. Thank you, Thornell. I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Jane Kerrigan to you. I'm, before uh, Jane shares her screen and shares her message of joy, I want to, because she worked so hard on it, show you her beautiful slide before her, before she speaks. So, yeah, there it is. All right, Jane. I stood in my living room the other day, looking out over the butterfly bush, which has grown all out of proportion in our front garden. It has become an oasis for butterflies. I saw a monarch there the other day. Bees and some weird thing that has a beak like a hum. Just a moment. I tell you, you, want, you need a few more minutes. Uh, I can read. No, 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 no. You, if you want to post the link, I can um, show it for you. Okay, very good. If you want to put it in chat. While they are working on that, I am going to move us to our next part of the service, but we'll come back, Jane, don't worry. Thank you. I guess so you don't have to feel rushed. Uh, this morning, we are sharing the plate with the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP of Anne Arundel County. Uh, so please be generous. Uh, half of what you give goes to this organization. While we're waiting, uh, uh, can you put uh, Jane on mute? And we're going to move on to the offering. Here are the ways to donate to UUCA. You can use this QR code and it will take you to the website and the links. But while you're waiting and giving and being generous, 
Uh, enjoy this song by Sarah Jones, Blue Boat Home. for your generosity. Are we ready to go with the video? All right, when you're ready. No audio. Uh, I hear, I don't hear anything yet. Okay. Melanie, are you playing the video? I'm trying. Okay. Unless you're ready to go. No, I can't. Okay. Hold on one sec. I stood in my living room the other day, looking out over the butterfly. Uh, I think your is your sound optimized? Out of proportion in our front garden. It has become an oasis for butterflies. Is it okay, John? Oh, the sound. The sound is One yeah. more second. Sorry. It's the Melanie show this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
I, I see your front page screen. I don't see the video. There. I stood in my living room the other day, looking out over the butterfly bush, which has grown all out of proportion in our front garden. It has become an oasis for butterflies. I saw a monarch there the other day. Bees and some weird thing that has a beak like a hummer and the body of a bee. I'm told it's a hummingbird moth. If I'm lucky, I might be visited by the scarlet tanager or the rose-breasted grosbeak. But best of all are the hummingbirds. They zoom and chatter and fight each other for territory and a space at the feeder. They stop on a dime and hover and then zoom off to the nearby trees. They love this oasis. Dare I say it, coral head. And they rest in the bush, getting ready for the attack. I tried to count how many, and the most I got was eight at a time. I think there might be a family, and I found them in my identification book. They are ruby-throated hummers. I found myself laughing out loud at the tiny birds, and something felt so familiar. I thought for a minute that the butterfly bush might as well be a coral head, with fishes to observe as they flitter and fly through their lives. Only these fishes were birds. I want to talk about joy. The kind of joy that engulfs us in abandon, that takes over reason for a moment and requires a release of expression, that makes me stand in the middle of my living room and laugh out loud. Think of the baby playing peekaboo and laughing that full, rich baby belly laugh that nearly topples them over. Or the newlyweds on their wedding day, looking at each other with love and hope and expectation. Or the three-year-old giggling while splashing in a puddle over and over again just because. Or maybe it's your dog anticipating you throwing the ball, leaping and quivering and wagging their tail an entire backside. Joy. We all have it. Some of us forget where to find it or how to use it, but it's there. And I wanna help you find that joy, even when for whatever reason you lose it, you can transform it. Maybe you find your joy in a perfectly curated fine wine enjoyed by the fire while tucked under a fluffy lap robe. Maybe you find your joy skiing down the middle of a field of moguls in the best snow you can imagine, or camping amid the monumental skyline of our national parks, or parasailing over a Caribbean blue ocean, or just looking out over that ocean from a warm spot safe on the beach. Joy, you have it. Take a moment to remember it. It may not be the same today as it was in days past, but it's still there. Scuba diving, that's my joy. I've often said that even if I could not see, I would still dive because the feeling of diving is as close to the feeling of flying like a bird that I would ever know. I love the feeling of collecting myself and my gear, and my gear taking a deep breath, and letting it all out while pushing down on my regulator to begin the descent through the deep blue. For a moment, everything is just blue. No up, no down, no reference. But I have trust and I go with it. And suddenly a dim sense of scenery comes into view. Perhaps it'll be a wreck to explore or just a platform on which to conduct trainings. But if I'm lucky, It'll be a reef, coral head after coral head of color and movement, a reef full of life and mystery and nooks and crannies to explore. I adjust my gear so that I am hovering just above the reef, neither touching the bottom nor floating to the surface. 
I control my buoyancy with my breath. A deep inhale, and I go up. A strong exhale, and I return. I can fly in this neutral state. I love to dive. So I watch as a tiny fish creates a beautiful pattern in the sand. A mandela, which is designed to entice a mate to find him and his home irresistible. I notice a moray eel poking out of his hidey hole, gasping, showing me his many layers of teeth. I watch, but I give him wide berth. I find lobsters or angelfish or squirrelfish poking out from under rocks, and I realize that this spot is their home. Maybe I count the many colors in a passing parrotfish, and I swim with filefish who flash their colors blue and gold as we continue down the reef. I fly over a coral head, and all the anthias or damselfish hanging out just above the coral suddenly swoop in to hide among the polyps. I love to dive. It is endlessly fascinating. It is endlessly flying. And if I can remain calm as the sharks swim past and the stingrays navigate above my head, I am rewarded by being considered just one of the bunch, an awkward looking fish to be sure, but not something to be afraid of, just another creature. And as my reward, I slowly maneuver my way into a small school of barracuda. They are menacing and can be aggressive, but I mean them no harm. And before I know it, there are fish ahead of me, barracuda to the right and to the left. And when I slowly check, I see that they are behind me too. I did it. I'm in. But every dive comes to an end, and I ready myself to ascend. I check time and gear, adjust my breathing, and slowly begin to kick my way to my safety stop. There, I have a few moments to remember the dive. Photographers check their camera gear, and new divers excitedly try to tell each other without words what magic they have seen. It makes me grin just to think of the dive. It is my joy. And throughout the course of this dive, I have been completely consumed by the ocean. No thoughts of work or stresses of life, politics, to-do lists, or relationship issues. I have given my entire attention to the dive, and I am a happy girl. That is what diving meant. And then it was all taken from me. No more dives, no more reef, no colorful fish or sharks, no octopus, no rays, no feeling like flying. It was gone because of a brain tumor. And hey, I survived, so I can't complain too much. But I will never dive again. I think I went through all the stages of grief, disbelief and shock, denial, guilt and pain, bargaining, anger, depression, and finally acceptance. But as I look back on this enormous change in my life, I realize that acceptance has become adaptation, has become transition or transformation. I have transformed the joy I got by diving into a joy that is pervasive in all aspects of my life. Joy is a state of mind and an orientation of the heart. It is a settled state of contentment, confidence, and hope. It is something or someone that provides a source of happiness. Joy isn't just a smile or a laugh. Joy is something that is deep within and doesn't leave quickly. What is your joy? Where does your joy live in you? Have you transformed your joy? Take a moment to focus on what brings you joy. What is it about that perfectly curated wine by the fire that sings to you? 
What draws you back to ski those moguls? What sense of well-being do you find staring out over a Caribbean blue ocean? Well, I have a friend who did competition water skiing for much of his youth. He traveled and competed all over the East Coast. He loved it, but he says that as the years have passed, his flexibility, hips and knees have given way to a more sedentary life. But he loves teaching his grandkids to water ski. He drives the boat, he picks them up when they fall, critiques their runs, and offers warm towels and cold watermelon on the ride home. He has transformed his joy into something new. The 13th century mystic poet Rumi said, let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will not lead you astray. So if joy is indeed a settled state of contentment, confidence, and hope, then my not being able to dive need not have plunged me into grief. I too could find a way to transition the joy I found diving to new moments of happiness. Happiness based on the state of mind and orientation of the heart that I once found in scuba diving. Joy transitioned comes with an understanding of self and a distillation of joy. Mine came after the grief and over time, without thinking about it, until one day I noticed that it was a transformation I could never have planned. Let me explain. One day I realized that I'm a natural leader. Of course I am. As a dive instructor, I would say to a group of terrified newbies, come 40, 50, 60 feet underwater, you'll be safe with me. And the new divers would willingly follow because they recognized me as their leader. They felt comfortable, well, safe in my care. Today, I lead coming to the table groups all over our area and start new ones frequently. People are willing to have deep and difficult conversations about race, to be vul vulnerable about their relationship to racism and white supremacy because they see me as their leader. They trust me to provide a safe space and know I will have their back. The leadership that I learned diving has transitioned to a different kind of leadership. I realized that I was a teacher while teaching diving. Patience and empathy, compassion and creativity were all part of the arsenal of tricks when teaching a student to be comfortable underwater. That arsenal stood me in good stead when presenting a paper to a national surgical group. Standing in front of 5,000 surgeons all wondering what this non-MD had to offer. Nevertheless, because I am a teacher, I taught them something. Yes, I learned a lot from diving and it has transitioned to my life. What about you? Does what brings you joy exist in its original form? Or have you too had a transformation, a transition? Can you find a way to make your once joyful practice, but now only a distant memory, a new practice of joyfulness? I believe you can, and I am proof. Transition is merely the process or period of changing from one state or condition to another. But the transition of joy requires more than merely changing. It requires that you dare to listen to your own truth. It requires you to find yourself to know yourself, to have, as we heard in our reading of Mary Oliver's journey, the experience of knowing. The journey is a poem of transition. It speaks of the moment when you dare to listen to your own truth and set sail into a new life. A new life requires a death of some kind, a letting go. When you let go, 
What you let go of is a way of being in the world that you have outgrown. The journey speaks to the birth of a new self, a deeper identity that was in you all along. This new self does not flee from the world, but walks deeply into it. This is a knowing which reveals the true meaning of your joy. It is a knowing that may remain hidden in your happiness, but then one day, when you most need to experience the transition, when you are most willing to begin, it is then that your journey to transition is revealed. Knowing yourself, trusting yourself, requires that you move on from the past, perhaps move on from the comfortable and safe. You must take the first step. Though doubt and uncertainty surround you, you must be willing to put the past aside and leap. Trusting that your joy will transition to new and ever exciting happiness. Start walking. Start walking towards your teacher. Your legs will get heavy and tired and then comes the moment of feeling the wings you've grown lifting. And yet again, I am flying. True, I cannot dive. But I have learned that my joy was always much more than the dive. I have transitioned my joy and integrated it into my everyday life. And when I close my eyes, open my heart, I find that yet again I am flying. I observe the butterfly bush and the hummers and I know that these birds have become my fishes. What about you? Can you find that place where your joy is transitioned? You can find that place. Rumi tells us when you do things from the soul, you feel a river moving in you, a joy. May it be so. Well worth the wait. Thank you, Jane. Did you want to say something? Thank you very much. I appreciate all the wonderful comments in the chat. Um, yes, the sermon is available on YouTube and we'll make sure that it's available to anyone who wants it. But I want to thank Dale, who couldn't be with us this morning, but he did he made my words sound so much more important. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we are going to move on to announcements. We have several things happening today at three o'clock, a free concert, but we're asking for donations. 
uh, the don you can click on that QR or put your phone on that QRL and get set up. It's going to be on uh, Brian Gann's Facebook page, but you can go to the UU Annapolis Arts in the Woods page and find a link there as well. This is exciting. Uh, the Sunrise Quartet is joining Brian, and this is our inaugural virtual concert, three o'clock. Uh, we will, the link will become available to you to watch it. And then after that, you come back to UUCA after the concert at 445 for a uh, conversation with Brian. So uh, this is going to be an exciting time tonight. So as, as you can see, I'm really pushing it. We have an, a series for our newcomers called Inquirers. And it takes a break after we welcome new members, but it's back today. Uh, so join me if you are new to the church and interested in learning about what we do and how we're dealing with virtual church until we go back to our building. And you can ask me whatever question you want and uh, just stay on the line after we finish here. For the rest of you, we're inviting you to go to a new breakout room and uh, the link will be posted. This is uh, for you, you, the vote. And uh, Christy, I'm going to invite you for 30 seconds to say something. Can you unmute yourself and, and uh, share? Are you there, Christy? Maybe you're already gone. No, I'm here. It wouldn't, it wouldn't let me. All, right. <laughs> All better. Um, so hi, everybody. We are kicking off our um, our work with Reclaim Our Vote this afternoon. And if you would like to, or this morning, I'm sorry, if you would like to join us for the breakout room, we will give you the basics on how to do postcards for Reclaim Our Vote or phone bank for Reclaim Our Vote. And you do not have have to have any experience to join us today. We're just gonna talk about the program and show you how it works and um, invite you to join our upcoming phone banking and postcarding clubs. So thank you, hope to see you there. Thank you, Christy. I'm going to uh, put that on uh, something that's clickable. I actually, we're putting in the chat. So if you wanna go after church, everyone else, I'm inviting you to go to that because as you know, this is an important time in, our his in the history of our country, which is why I'm also promoting our legislative ministry. Reverend Anastasia and I are gonna be working with UU to Vote and UULM as we work on a larger, uh, not just throughout the county, but throughout the state and even perhaps uh, participating or partnering with Pennsylvania. So uh, this is a big year. We have to turn out people to vote for obvious reasons that I don't need to say here. I also hope you're uh, enjoying learning and reading our uh, book of the summer book read, which summer's coming to a close. The, the service and discussion will be October 4th. Reverend Anastasia and I will be sharing words about and of uh, in the book. And then the Building Beloved Community through the Eighth Principal, Principal Practice Series will have a conversation with facilitators. So we're looking forward to that. And finally, our closing song before we hear our closing words from Thornell is another one arranged and performed by Dale Kerrigan. It's a short one, but I'm sure you'll enjoy it.
Closes with our uh, extinguish of the chalice words. I just want to thank the worship leaders for their help this month. It's been fantastic. And please send them uh, Thornell and Elise and Robert uh, and Ray and all those who please send them a note and let them know that you appreciate the messages you got from them. Uh, they worked really hard on their services and uh, made them their own, as you can tell. And it just uh, it was great to work with them, and we look forward to doing more of that in the future. But next Sunday, I'm going to speak. So it's Labor Day weekend. If you're here, or even if you're somewhere else, take a, an hour and come in and check out uh, some of the crazy stuff I've learned uh, in the summer that I hope to uh, will guide our work uh, in, the, in the months to come. So thank you so much. Thornell, please close us out. Now is muted. Rejoice in love, we know and share. In love and beauty everywhere. Rejoice in truth that makes us free. And in the good that yet shall be. Now unmute yourselves and greet your neighbors with joy. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for the sermon. Good it was wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Good, 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 Good to see you, everybody. Good 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 a great Good message. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. Awesome job, Jane. Sermon. Jane. Wonderful. Nailed it. Nailed it. Conclusion. Sarah, are you here? Hi, Sarah. The music was fabulous, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Sarah, the same program. Yay. <laughs> no, church Zoom gets teamwork. Oh, yeah. Teamwork. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Heather. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Jane, I'm sending the ladies to YouTube to all of my family. Hey Peggy. Hey, hi. See you all later. Bye, everybody. Great day. The link is posted. Have a good day. It's Latika's birthday today. Oh, Latika, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Happy birthday, birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, Zoom singing. Isn't it a joy? Thank you. Don't fuck older at all. Just wiser. Oh, thank you, Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anybody that uh, is on thank this Thank you. Hey, now. <laughs> If you stay here at, at 11 o'clock, I'm going to start talking to uh, meet the minister. Uh, you're welcome to stay on and ask questions, and I'll try to answer them. <laughs> um, but <laughs> the priority goes to new people. The rest of us are supposed to use this link to get to you, you, the vote, correct? I'm not forcing anybody, Heather. Right, I know. But that's how we use we use that link that's in the chat to get to the yes. who you the vote. Bye, cool. everybody. All that's right. where Melanie, I'm going. Melanie, mm -hmm. you're terrific. Thank you, Melanie. I'm going to you you the vote. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye. I'm doing my postcards. In the chat. Mm -hmm. I don't see where that is on you on uh, on on chat. Where is that um, link?
I keep posting it. Yeah, it's the first, it's the latest, latest one on there, staff. The latest one, okay. Uh, John, I'm going to say thanks. goodbye. Lynn is saying goodbye. We're uh, driving and we're about to hit a place where there's not much signal. So uh, great service. See you soon. All right. Thanks, Stacy. Bye, bye. bye. John, are you good? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm now full of joy. Mm -hmm. Bye.